You lived through the Second Vatican Council. Can you tell us a little bit about how the Council has impacted your faith life over the years? There's an awful lot to say about that, and I know we're on a time schedule here, so I can't say everything. But I have to say that if anybody ever wants proof of the Holy Spirit working, Vatican II was that proof, I think. And the older I get, uh, it, I was a pre-Vatican II church member for the first third of my life. And the older I get, the more I appreciate Vatican II and what it accomplished. Um, I was really primed for Vatican II. I had a post-Vatican II father who was in the pre-Vatican II church, and he influenced me a great deal. Um, he worked as a religious mural artist all of his life, and um, he had seen and been and lived uh, a life that gave him very, very great vision. Um, so none of the changes in the church were a surprise to me. I sort of was primed. And then I went to Emmanuel College, and the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur uh, may have been enclosed in their habits, but their uh, fantastic intellects and their embracing of social justice and all things um, that the Holy Spirit would inspire you to embrace were um, principles that they laid out for the women. And to this day, I'm grateful for their influence in my life, and I cherish those years. Um, you know, uh, Vatican II was frightening. I mean, I had a lot of elders in my family, and it was frightening and blasphemous, really, to some of them, because, of course, they were used to, well, the mass changes, for example. Um, to them, you know, you went and you said your rosary, and then the priest did his thing, and then and there was mass. Um, but again, at Emmanuel College, there were no boys to be altar boys, and so we were used to a dialogue mass. So, you know, how lucky was I when the when I, the mass changes came about? Uh, but all of the the uh, emphasis of scripture, the um, the changes in baptism. We baptized two little girls, and I never went to their baptisms. I mean, how sad is that? Um, I think of it now, and that's why I'm so overjoyed to be present at baptisms at church, because I I missed it with my own kids, and it, it's such an important and wonderful experience to think of these children coming into the faith and, you know, and being part of the community. Um, the changes, the... Uh, a little example that a lot of people may res may resonate with a lot of people. Uh, when I was a little girl, uh, I used to go visit my grandmother on Saturdays, and I used to go visit my cousin who was around the corner. And she and I dutifully would go to confession every single Saturday afternoon. We were about eight or nine years old, you know. And we would go to confession. Well, what do you do when you're eight or nine years old, especially in a strict Italian family? You don't get to do a whole lot that's bad. And if you do, your mother's telling you about sin, 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 sin. So you're scared. So we would make up our sins, you know. We would compare notes before we got into church. And we would tell the priest, you know, that we had disobeyed or we had lied. And especially with the lies, we'd say we'd lied five times, and I'd say, no, Sue, we have to say six because we're really lying this time because we didn't lie five times. So we would go in with all these manufactured, all I can think of was the poor priest sitting there listening to all that. Well, of course, Vatican II brought us to a different view. It wasn't the rules and the little rules and the little regulations anymore. It was where your heart is and the formation of conscience, um, the social justice issues that had always been part of church teaching, but now came sort of to the forefront. It was not, I mean, it was not the easy church anymore. It became the hard church. It's a, it's a challenge. Uh, before I could go to church on Sunday and I could not eat meat on Friday and I could observe all these little rules and regulations and here I was and I was in the box and I'm tight with God. Now it's relationship. It's where am I with, with other people? Um, how do I love? How do I put myself second and make other people as much important in my life as I am in, important in my life? It's about love. Um, and it isn't about strict rules and regulations. It has to do with relationship, and that's tough. 
Um, so it's a more challenging situation, and it's harder to do. But it's such a joy. It's so freeing. Um, I, I liken it to, to the church releasing me from the iron mask. Um, the idea that now we are developing real relationship with God. It's a joy to be part of this post-Vatican II church, and I am so grateful to God that I got to be here. So I could go on for hours, but nobody's that interested in what I have to say. They're busy living it.